What's up? It's Victor from the Tabletop Knights. We're playing Dark Souls, the board game. I'm a massive Dark Souls fan. You'll probably notice in the background some of our other videos, um, some Dark Souls pieces like that night behind me. So I'm pretty obsessed with Dark Souls. I've played the board game quite a few times, actually, but I've never done the campaign in this board game. So I thought, hey, you know, it's I've always played it solo. It's a very solo video game. So why not do a solo series in the board game? So um, I'm playing as the knight. That means you get five sparks. You get 16 souls to begin with. If you've never played the scenario, there's a few different rules. Um, for example, leveling up costs a little bit more than normal. Instead of uh, costing uh, two to, uh, two souls to go from base to tier one, it costs four and so on. So actually, it's uh, it's right here. Uh, it costs four souls to go from base to tier one. From tier one to tier two, eight souls. In tier two to tier three, 16. And for, tier, uh, for 20 souls as well, you can go to a tier four, which isn't actually on this board. So that's some extra sort of content. The first scenario is the gargoyles. So just like the video game, you've got to go through uh, to the gargoyles. And exactly like the video game, there is two gargoyles before you go into the next section of the game. So um, as you can see, the boss fight isn't here yet. It's actually over here by the, um, the gate. The fog gate, once we get there, we'll do the gargoyle boss fight, which there is two of in the one room. But because there's only one gargoyle model, you fight one at a time to make it actually doable in the first place. So we'll get there eventually, hopefully. We've got the, some gargoyle cards down here and uh, some things down here that you can't see that I'll put on screen. Over here, we've got our character sheet with his ability. So he obviously gets the long sword, the kite shield, and the knight armor. So that'll come in uh, pretty handy. And we've got our dice tower here as well, which we will be using quite a bit of. If there's any mistakes, please forgive me. It's been a long time since I played this game. So do let us know in the comments below uh, if I'm making any mistakes. Also, while you're here, let us know what your favorite Dark Souls game is. Uh, in this sort of campaign book, you go through Dark Souls 1 and you go through Dark Souls 3. So, uh, so the uh, basically, blah, 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 from the first moments inside the undead burg, you will be assailed by ranks of hollowed soldiers and mindless zombies. And your only reward for defeating them will be to face gargoyles that stand vigil over the next destination on your path. If you prevail, you will find the same is also true of Sen's Fortress. So that's jumping ahead a little bit. But uh, in the Undead Berg, so Section 1, you've got two Level 1 rooms. And then you've got a Level 2 room here as well. So the Level 2 room heads into the boss fight, which uh, once I get up to that, I'll clear this whole section off here. And then you'll see just the boss fight only. So first things first... I'm just a lonely knight with pretty average gear, but I do get one Estus flask, so I'll put that there. Um, I also get a, I think it's, well, I forget what it's called, but it's like a luck token. And I also get a coin as well. I forget the names off the top of my head, which I can use for uh, to, to aid me in my adventures. I get five sparks on the um, bonfire, which I can purchase extra sparks for two souls, which isn't too bad. So I can save some of my 16 souls towards that. But also in the campaign, buying the uh, buying things from the blacksmith Andre is two souls instead of one. But you can sell them back to him for one soul. So there's a little bit of uh, you get a little bit of reward. So let's do that first. Let's uh, buy some gear. So we'll go ahead and we'll buy two cards. That's for eight uh, for for four souls. See if I can use any of it from the get-go. I can't really, to be honest. <laughs> it's it's always really difficult to level up to begin with. So um, I'll manage these souls. So I've spent four so far. Let's uh, get some souls out here. I'll probably be better off using the smaller one. So I had 16. So it's uh, 6, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. So th they, this is sort of a better more accurate towards the souls and then I just spent four there's going to be a lot of management in this so I spent uh, I just spent four souls just then boop there we go for two cards one of them was a halberd which I 
requires quite a bit of faith, which I would have to level up to the max. So what I'll do, and also a soul arrow, which I really don't want to use. Um, I could, again, I'd have to level up twice to do that. So I'll sell both of them for two souls. So I'll just go retrieve two souls from the bank here. One and uh, come on, two. So it puts me back up to 14. So these get discarded from the game, basically. You can't get them back because I've sold them back to him and I don't want them. So now uh, I'll buy two more cards from him. That's another four souls. So one and two. And we got the Firelink Armor, which is not too bad. And the Sunless Armor, which is not too bad either. So let's have a look. So I can use... If I upgrade my faith one more time, I can use the Sunless Armor, which compared to mine uh, is almost the same, but I can upgrade it twice, so that's that could come in handy. But then I've also got the Fire Link Armor as well, which uh, I probably would benefit from getting. Let's have a look. So I would only have to upgrade... I'd have to upgrade twice to, to use that. So I might do that, because that will add an extra to defense, which is good. So how much do I need to upgrade again? Let's have a quick look uh so i would it would cost me eight souls basically so i'll go ahead and do that so i'll spend his nine souls so i'll get one back even with two souls to upgrade my so i get to upgrade two so i'll upgrade strength and i'll upgrade my intelligence as well meaning i can get my knight armor back and equip the fire link armor which down the line I'll be able to imbue with gems and stuff to help me uh, defend a bit better. And then I'm going to assume that I can sell my Knight Armor as well. So I'll sell the Knight Armor and the Sunless Armor back for an extra two souls, which I'll immediately spend. So I'll spend uh, both of them for two more cards. So one and two. So I did get the Simple Gem. Reduce the cost of this weapon's highest stamina attack by one stamina which I can't use at the moment, but I will keep. And then I also got a Claymore, uh, which is for my character, but I'll have to level up a bit, so I'll also keep that. So I didn't get any better weapons, but I do have a much better defense now with that Fire Link armor, so that's always a benefit. All right, so there's going to be a lot of uh, rule checking and whatnot, so I'll have the, the guide there. And we'll obviously, we'll head into this room up here. So again, I've got no souls, but I do have a simple gem and a claymore. So if I can get a weapon soon, then I can uh, hopefully apply some gems. All right, so we're going to have a monster spawn there and then. The monsters get to go first. So I'll go up against this node as well. Also, one of the really cool things about the campaign is you can actually rush through areas. So if I didn't want to fight this area, I would flip the card, all the monsters would spawn, the monsters would have their go, and then on my turn, I would rush to the next area. One of the disadvantages of that is if I was to get hit, then I would enter the next zone with damage already. So that's a pretty cool um, bit of gameplay just for the campaign sort of stories there. All right, so it's actually a pretty good room to be honest. So we do get a gravestone and a chest. So the gravestone will go on to this. And the chest will go, where are my chests? Here, we'll go on to there. And then on the sword, we also have one of these big guys spawned. And they do quite a bit of damage if they hit you. All right. Uh, Let's uh, go straight for it. So I'm just going to get some dice prepared. So I do have a few blacks here as well. And a few blues now that especially that I've got my defense, defensive abilities as well. And five damage is definitely doable for sure. For sure. All right, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So I'm just going to quickly read the gravestone because you definitely want the gravestone. That's for sure because that'll help you with the boss fight. So I'm just going to quickly read what I have to do to get that. All right, so basically, I get the gravestone by just being in the the vicinity of one. So I don't have to go over and activate it. And also, in terms of doing damage to this guy, um, I can move before or after an attack, but not both. So I can't move one attack and then move away, unfortunately. So um, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult because I thought I'd be able to go in one, hit him, and then run back and use some stamina, burn some stamina to go away. But uh, no, you cannot do that. 
All right, so let's get into it, shall we? So the enemy will go first. Now, there has been a lot of confusion about the large hollow soldier, so I'll quickly just read um, what I read on Board Game Geek just to sort of help with the setup of this room. So um, the large hollow soldier first targets the nearest character. So because it's just me, he'll always target me. Any models on the same node, the same circle, as the large hollow so soldier then gets pushed off his node onto any legal node. Um, the initial push does not cause damage to any characters. So the large hollow soldier then moves one node towards the target character. If he lands on a node, he pushes them. Normal rules apply for pushing. Uh, this push deals five physical damage, then he can be blocked or dodged as the player wishes. So it's so basically he can push twice in one turn. So that sort of will help with the confusion confusion of him. All right, so he'll move forward one and do nothing, and I'll sort of just move uh, here. So if I if he was to move on to me now, he would do five damage, but now he's too far away, so he'll go there, and uh, that's his turn because he only does one movement. I'll move in onto his node for an attack. Now I have two options. I can roll one blue dice. Or for four stamina, which is very early on to be doing this, I can roll one extra black dice. So I have a pretty decent uh, defense. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And just, it, it is one extra damage, but he does have a shield of one. So I just want to make sure I at least get one hit of damage away if I can. All right, so let's uh, go down the dice tower. So I am doing two damage. So the black dice of one basically negates it. But negates his shield and I do two damage to him. So uh, I do have some tokens here, some damage. So you only need to do uh, three more to kill him. But that cost me a lot of stamina, so that's quite dangerous. Now it's his turn, so he'll push me onto a node and I get to pick, so I'll pick there. Actually, maybe I'll pick here, so I can pick behind him. And then he'll move onto me and push me for a five damage. But I do get to block. So because I upgraded my armor to Firelink Armor, I get one blue dice and my shield gives me one black dice. So I can uh, block all of it if I get lucky. Let's have a look. So I block three out of the five, meaning I take two. Perfect. So now it's... Uh, oh, and that'll also push me again. So he does do quite a bit of damage. Now I'll gain my two stamina. And I'll move in onto his node and I'll do an attack of one blue dice. And again, if I am moving this guy incorrectly, please let me know. I'd love to know for the next time, for the next scenario that I do. Providing you guys let me know if you like the series and, and a solo video. I don't really do solo videos very often. All right, so I'll go for an attack of one blue dice. So it's one, so it's not enough to do any damage. Uh, and then that's my turn. So same thing, he'll push me. And then he'll move in and do five damage, which I get to block. So he'll push me onto this node. But I still get one black dice, one blue dice defense. So again, I block three, taking two hits. So not too bad. I'll gain my four stamina. Now it's getting a little risky to sort of use a four uh, stamina move here for an extra black dice. But I will just move in for a normal attack. For one blue dice, let's go for it. What do we get? We got two, so that's just a one hit damage. So again, he has one shield that negates. So we'll put that there. So it's going to be risky, but I still have an Estus Flask worst case scenario. I'd hate to use it this early on because it costs a, a spark on your bonfire to reactivate it. So he'll push me, then he'll move in and push me again for five damage. But I get a good block in, hopefully. <gasps> Yep, so I block three out of the five once again. I'm pretty good with those. <laughs> I'm running out of red cubes already. And then it's my turn. So I'll go in and I'll do one blue dice damage. So I do one more damage to him there. Putting him on four out of the five. And then it is his turn once again. So he'll push me there. And then he'll move in and push me once again. His little tokens fell off, which does five damage. Let's do a defensive. So I block three once again. Let me get two more cubes from my little box here. Beautiful. That's not too bad. I'm about to die. 
<laughs> All right, let's uh, let's hope that I can finish him off this turn. So I'll, uh, I could run away. I could use one extra stamina, but I'm in a corner here, so I shouldn't have run to that corner. That's all right. I'll go into his node, and I'll go for an attack. So I can't spend any stamina, so I need to at least roll a 2, which uh, looks like is a 50... No, better than 50% chance on this dice. So I rolled a 3. That is enough to kill him. So he's dead. Damage done. This room is completed. The chest flips. I also get a grave token from before, which to activate it, I only have to be in the same room as, as it and defeat that scenario. So what these gravestones do is it lets me, helps me with the boss, which we'll get into much, much, much later. All right. Uh, okay, perfect. So I get two souls for completing the room. One and two. Um, and I also get a chest, which I believe is two items. I'm just going to have a quick look. Chests. All right. So... Um, if a party defeats the encounter, they open the chest by flipping the token, uh, and two cards from the treasure deck. So we get one and two. Hopefully one of them will be helpful. Titanite Shard and Thrall Axe. So again, I can only put this Thrall Axe onto, I mean the Titanite Shard onto a weapon. So it's not very helpful to me right now, unfortunately. But I can sell them. I can get some money here. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. And I also have a Thrall Axe. Oh, I don't know if this Thrall Axe is any better, but I can imbue it. Uh, now, I also, quickly, I get back all my health as well from before. So after every room, you refresh all your health. Otherwise, this game would be fairly impossible. Uh, so Thrall Axe is not too bad. I need 16 strength that I already have and 16 dexterity. So I can equip this if I level up. So I could sell two things. Let's have a look. Reduce the cost of this weapon's highest attack by one stamina. So that's not too bad. All this weapon's attack gains plus one damage. So it'll always be one damage. But uh, I think I think I will do that, to be honest. I'll sell... Mm, should I sell my claymore? All right. So I'm going to sell my longsword for one soul. So longsword is now gone. That's my main weapon. So technically I have no weapons right now. Okay. And then I'm also going to sell my claymore for one soul. And then I'm going to use these four souls to level up my dexterity to 19. Meaning I now have the thrall axe. So the thrall axe does two black dice as a standard attack. And for three stamina, one black dice, one blue dice. But I can imbue it twice. So I'm going to imbue it with both of my uh, gems that I have here. So I have the simple gem. So reduce the cost of this weapon's highest stamina attack by one stamina. So now my better attack instead of three is only two, which is very good. And also this weapon's attack gained one damage at all times. So I'll put that there. So it's not too bad. So I did manage to level up and get a better bit of better equipment there. All right, so this room's done, so we're fully healed. Let's go into the next level one room. So we'll, again, we'll go into this corner here and we'll flip this card. So this room still this has a chest as well. This is not rigged. So a chest on there. Uh, we have a barrel as well. And a barrel as well. All right. Then we also have a... It is called a... Silver Knight Swordman, so they're a bit intense. Here he is. He is on the double sword, so he'll actually be able to attack me this turn, I think. Yeah, he moves forward too, so he'll pretty much do an attack straight up, which sucks. All right, and then we have on the sword a normal guy and a bowman as well. So the bowman does magical damage, which I only have one blue against. And that'll go there. This gets to go back in that room. So they actually get to go first, unfortunately. So the Silver Knight Swordsman will go first and he'll actually move forward and do an attack. So I think when he does an attack, he pushes me as well. So I get to choose where, he, where I get pushed to. So I'm going to go there. That way I'm out of the way from another attack. So he'll push me and he's actually doing five damage. But I can block it. So I block three. So I only take two. That's not too bad. 
That's not too bad at all. And then the Hollow Soldier will go next, and he can only move one. So he has to move towards me, so I'll put him there. So that's still towards me. And then the Crossbow Hollow will go, so he'll actually move backwards and shoot me for three magical damage, and I only get one blue dice in the defense, which is still not too bad. So I block all three. So that's a that's a really good, not too bad of a turn. Okay, so I really need to... Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Should I just go for the... So the Silver Knight Swordman only has one health, but he has two shield. So I can go in there and go for a big attack. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go in and do an attack. So we're face to face here. And I will spend... So again, it's normally cost me three stamina for the better move, but it's only costing me uh, two now. So I'll go in there and use two stamina. Which means I get one black dice and one blue dice. And I'm already guaranteed one damage because of my other gem. So I'm doing three damage minus his two shields. So I've got two dice here. Plus one for my gem. Minus two is one damage. And that is actually enough to kill him. So they're actually not too much of a threat. Um, but they move quite fast. So they're, they're probably really beneficial to kill early. Uh, now it's their turn, so the Hollow Knight Soldier will go there. And uh, so he won't be able to attack me. And the Crossbowman, he'll probably stay in that corner because he can't really move any further away from me. So if I was to move him there, he's still two away. But if I keep him there, he's still two away. So he can't move any further because there's also a barrel here in the top corner as well. So, But he'll still do an attack of three. And I block one, so I take two two magical damage. That's still damage. All right, it's my turn, so I gain my two stamina back, and I'll move in on this guy and just try to kill him. And I'll spend that two stamina to sort of uh, more of a chance to kill him. So I'm doing three plus one for the gem is four. Does he block any? He does block one. So that is three damage, which is more than enough to kill him because he only has three health. I uh, one health. Boop. So he's dead as well. That's not too bad. And then the hollow soldier will go again, doing three damage. So he can he move away from me? He kind of he's sort of stuck in that corner. So that actually worked out well for me, to be honest. So he'll do three damage, and again I'll get my one blue dice defense. So I block two, so I gain one damage. Now it's my turn, I'll gain my two stamina. And I'm just going to move in. And I'll use an extra stamina to move in. So that'll cost me one. And then I will... Ooh, it's risky if I cost two stamina. I won't do that. I'll just use a normal blue dice... A uh, two black dice attack. So I'm already doing one. So I'm already negating his shield. I just have to make sure I get at least one damage. So that's more than enough to kill him. So that was another easy room. That was pretty good. That was actually easier than the first one. So I get full health and stamina back. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I also draw two items, one and two, and I get two souls. So it is time to start uh, saving some souls, I think, to level up for some better equipment. All right, heavy gem. So I do have a heavy gem here and a broadsword. So I can level up twice to get this broadsword. Yeah, it's not bad. It does add an extra to shield, uh, defense, and to and it can be imbued once. I'll have to level up twice to get that, but that's one of my class's specific um, things. So I might save for that. I'll have to level up twice, which is 16 souls, I believe. That's quite quite hefty. Let's have a look. So from tier 1, yeah, so 8 souls, uh, tier 1 to tier 2, 8 souls per level. So it cost me 16 souls to level up, which is a pretty daunting distance away. So this chest is now flipped. That goes in the middle. And we move on to the next room. So that was pretty success. Hopefully there's another chest in here. That would be badass. That'd be some awesome luck. So we'll go into this back corner here. Just in case, because yeah, I'm pretty good distance away from everything if I go into the back corner there. Alright, so into this room, there is actual traps in here. So, 
we'll just get some random ones here. Uh, nope, that one is not random because I saw the result. So it goes uh, on every node that isn't a door. So there's only three. And I don't know what they are. They could be traps, they could be not traps. They could just be normal blank areas. So I'll try to avoid those. Uh, and it's sort of getting difficult here, but it's manageable. I actually really like that. So there'll be one Silver Knight Swordsman on that. And one Silver Knight Swordsman on the other one. And a Silver Knight Bowman. So that is pretty manageable. I'll have to... I think I'll have to go for that Silver Knight Great Bowman pretty much straight away though. Because uh, he'll do quite a bit of damage to me. He keeps He does four every time. Is it four physical though? Yeah, he does four physical damage. So it is blockable for me. So this room is manageable. No chest, unfortunately. Nothing on there, just some dirty, dirty traps. All right, so they go first. Uh, so he'll go one and two. Now I get to decide, so I can make him go one and two because that's still one node away. So I'll do that, one and two. And I'll get him to go... So if I was at one, two, he'll still be two nodes away. So I can go one, two, one, two. And he's still one node away so that's 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 legal so it's it's a bit easier for me to sort of escape him but he's still one node away to, doesn't matter which which direction he goes so yeah yep cool and then he'll move backwards into the corner but he'll do four damage four physical damage so i get uh three uh i get one blue dice and one black dice so i block three of the four so that's pretty good defense I'm happy with that, but I also do have my special ability, which I can use anytime I want. Which is, I can add one blue dice to my defensive roll after my block. So if I block and I'm not happy with the results, I can add one blue dice to help with the block. Alright, so now it's my turn. So I'm going to... Hmm... Interesting. I'm going to go... If I go here... I'll go here and I'll go for the attack. So I'll spend two stamina to go for him. Try to kill him straight away. So I'm doing three here. Plus one for my gem, so that's four damage. Minus two is two, and he only needs one hit to kill him, so he's dead. So that was a successful turn. Now it's their turn, so he'll go in for the attack. And he'll uh, also push me, so I get to pick the node, so he goes there. And he'll do five damage to me, and I get to block it with two dice. So I block three out of the five. Puts me on three damage, and then the bowman, he'll actually move one away from me. Uh, do I want to get pushed there? No, I'll get pushed here. That's a bit more beneficial to me, I think. So I'll get pushed there. And that way the Bowman can't move anyway. He's not going to move there because that's actually technically closer to me. But he'll still do uh, a big amount of damage. So he's doing four to me. So I take three out of that four. Uh, do I want to take that damage though? Three out of the four. That's a lot. That is a lot. I'll actually spend my token to roll one blue dice. So I block three out of the four, so I take one damage. So I can't use that again until I rest at a bonfire. But that, that was worth it in my opinion. All right, now it's my turn. So I'll go there. Oh, so I gain two stamina back immediately. I'll go there and I'll cost an extra stamina to move into his node. So And then I'll also use two stamina to go for a big attack. Let's go for it. All right, so that's only a roll of two, but I have plus one on my gem, so I'm doing three. Negative two for his shield. He's actually dead because he only has one health, so he's dead. So that was quite worth it, actually. So he's dead, and then he'll go... So I'm managing to avoid these traps, so he'll go one and two, so he can't actually reach me, no matter which way he goes. One, two, one, two. So I'll move him one, two. I'll move him here. It's a bit more beneficial for me. And then it's my turn, so I gain two stamina back. Thank you. And I'll move in on his node. 
and I'll spend two stamina to go for a big attack here and hope for the best. So I'm doing three plus one is four, negative two for his shield is two damage. So that is enough to kill him. So that's the rooms emptied. So that's not too bad. It's not too bad at all, actually. That's uh, not too difficult. So that room is completed. Uh, I get two souls for that. Two souls is uh, better than none, but it's still not enough to sort of... I mean, I can go into the bosses. The only thing is, is I need to defeat both bosses to, to kill them. So to defeat the scenario. So I could do that. I could just, I'm right here. I get all my health back. I still have an Estus flask. So I can go for the bosses or I can redo all these rooms to get two, four, six more solves, which would put me on 10, which still isn't enough to upgrade. So I would have to do these twice. So I'm two, four, six. Um, so I'd have to get 12 souls, which would be enough to upgrade to my broadsword. Uh... No, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to go straight for the gargoyle. So I'm just going to quickly rearrange some things, set up for the boss fight, and we'll see how we go.